Can someone go ahead? Yes. Um, uh, Edgar. Okay. Perhaps I um, my name is uh, Mahanu. And just to give my contribution, I was supposed to pick up from where Nelson uh, had uh, highlighted a few issues concerning the JKA takeover case. I wouldn't want to uh, belabor myself and go over the issues that uh, he had already mentioned. But what people need to understand is that uh, whereas we're being told that uh, there's a company from Cam uh, India that has been contracted to upgrade and develop our national airport, what is really happening is a complete takeover. And I will summarize it uh, very briefly so that everybody understands. A what is happening right now is that uh, a PIP um, a model of renovating and developing the, uh, the, the, the airport has been submitted and has been approved. Now, the reason why we have uh, a PIP model uh, on uh, major projects uh, that uh, involve governments is because um, there is always that special need uh, for 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 to 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 exploit or to explore that option, because direct um, competitive bidding does not offer the uh, options. That means you explore this option in a case of um, a uniqueness that is contained in. Now uh, the reason why I call it a takeover and not um, a leasing per se, as it has been painted, is because the funding the funding of this project is going to cost about, uh, when the, 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 the proposal was put forth, they said that uh, it's going to cost about 2.047 USD uh, billion dollars. But after the evaluation committee, they reviewed that amount to uh, 2.05 um, uh, USD uh, billion dollars, which means they increased the amount. But let me even shock you. Um, whereas they say that this is a, 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 a public-private uh, initiative, the, the whole project is being funded from the current revenue that is being earned by JKIA up to a tune of 53%. Now, they say that they are going to run the project for um, 30 years, after which they are supposed to hand over. You see, the model they're trying to paint is like that one that we've seen working with the expressway, whereby a private investor comes in, does an infrastructure or a project, manages it, rec uh, recovers their initial capital, then hands over the project to the government. But what is happening here, this company is not putting even a single shilling into this company. And this is how they are doing it. 53% is being funded by the current revenue uh, and by JKIA, then 33% is going to be funded by a loan which they want to take using the, 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 the title deed of the land that is owned by JKIA. And then they are telling us that 14% is going to be uh, 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 funded by an investor. And we all know, uh, 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 I'm sure you can all understand that if someone in the Kenyan context talks of an investor, we know what that means. But more shocking is this. At the end of the process of the 30 years, when they have recovered their $2 billion, which they have allegedly um, uh, invested at this point, they are supposed to be paid again $2 billion at the end of the 30 years. So which means they allegedly put in uh, $2 billion, which in the real sense they never put it, and at the end of it, they are going to take, they are going to recover two billion uh, US dollars in a span of thirty years. Then, at the end of the thirty years, they will demand again to be paid two billion. So that's four billion US dollars. Then they will own a lifetime stake of twenty-one percent. So clearly, you can see this is someone that is domiciled in this country, trying to secure their financial freedom for their children and perhaps the fourth generations to come. So it is a very serious issue that everybody needs to uh, keep on looking at it. We are compiling the petition, and by next week we should have filed the petition, and we'll keep on sharing and updating Kenyans the status of the petition. 
obviously by the look of the materials that have been placed before me it is uh, highly likely that the court is going to stop the whole process so that a complete audit can be done and Kenyans can understand and so Kenyans this is just but one of the issues that is happening in one of the parastatos so as a way forward we also need to start demanding for a cleanup of most of the state corporations in this country and that's where actually the problem is because government offers services to Kenyans through state corporations recently i saw the cabinet secretaries being fired and then being rehired again what we need to understand is that uh, based on our constitution most of these cabinet uh, ministers uh, cabinet secretaries much as they have a lot of power as it can be seen from where we sit the chief accounting officers of most ministries are permanent secretary principal secretaries those are the people who control the budgets those are the people who run the ministries so if you see a ministry failing or succeeding it's because the principal secretary is either doing a good job or they are doing a bad job so as kenyans we need to demand during this moment much as we have long term goals we also need to ensure that we have we inject instant action that will deliver results for purposes of revamp, revamping public service we need to demand that principal secretaries they must be dismissed because they have failed the government they have failed this presidency we need to demand an overhaul of parastato heads and chiefs board members of parastatos ceos of parastatos chairman of parastatos all these people belong to a group that is already rotten and if we are doing a reset we are resetting this country these are the people that are supposed to go now the other thing that i talked about but i want to talk about it more today we need to de-incentivize public service we need to decommercialize public service this is what I, i i mean by that every public servant and this is something that we want to start demanding and i need every kenyan to understand we need to ensure that if you are drawing salaries from any public coffers you need to be put on a payroll whether you are an mp whether you are a cs whether you are a principal secretary we need to demand that everybody be put on a payroll on, on a job group the job group will decide the amount of salary you draw so you can be a cs but you don't have a degree you don't have a masters degree you only have a class 8 certificate you are paid a salary based on your academic qualifications that is it that is how we will start the incentivizing public service and we will end up with the people who are dedicated and people who want to serve now the other thing someone may ask me if you are saying that uh, the people should be put on a, on, on a, in job groups and their credentials should uh, determine how much they earn do you think these people are going to buy degrees and they are going to use it now i was thinking about it and based on my logic reasoning we have some rules in the discipline forces in discipline forces the military the police if you are above the age of 30 years you cannot join the discipline forces so similarly we need to ensure that we scrutinize the degrees and certificates that people bring for purposes of looking for opportunities we should make it as a rule that if you are above if you have a degree that you have acquired above the age of 30 years that degree should be declared just a honorary degree it should not be used to assist you to get an opportunity in government because chances are these people who get degrees above the age of 30 years they have gone around they have engaged in corruptions they have money to buy their way out in schools and they have bought degrees So if you get a degree above the age of 30 years that degree should just be a honorary so that degrees that can only be used to secure good opportunities and job opportunities are those ones that are acquired below the age of 30 and for sure automatically the corrupt people the people who have been interfering with systems are going to be eliminated we will end up creating a lot of opportunities and by doing that only people that are dedicated to serve kenyans will be finding themselves in these spaces people who think public service is a space to enrich themselves will not have it anymore 
So as I finish and as I conclude, what is the way forward? I have heard people saying that in the event the presidency is forced to resign, that means the president and the deputy president we will run into anarchy. No, we will not run into anarchy because we have a constitution and the constitution provides very clearly that in the absence of a president and the deputy president, then the speaker takes over for six months, for six, um, for two, for 60 days, that is two months, then an election has to be held. Now, others are saying that how are we going to have elections without the IBC chairman? That is wrong. We can still have elections. What we need is goodwill. Even in the absence of the commissioners, elections can still be had. Previously, we have had commissioners in offices, but we've seen the Bengal elections. So the mere fact that we have commissioners in the office does not guarantee that we are going to have a free and fair election. Elections can be had if we can be done, if we have good people in offices that have good willing, we have good